At 4 a.m. on a cold night in January, the Cleveland Browns deplane from Denver fresh from a harrowing flight and painful defeat in the AFC Championship game. The frustrating loss didn't dampen the spirit of over 400 frozen fans who braved both the elements and early morning hours in tribute to their local heroes. We'll be back. I think they're great. They lost, they lost, but hey, they did good. They're still our Browns. They played a hell of a game. They came back, almost had it. Next year. <laughs> this heartwarming show of support typified the relationship between the town and this team. Amidst the many banners waving at Hopkins Airport, one particular sign seemed to sum up the season for the 1987 Browns. The home opener brought the season's first win as Cleveland parlayed an impressive blend of defense and offense into a romp over arch-rival Pittsburgh. Bernie going to try and run, now fires, pass is caught for a touchdown! Joe at the field! All right, Ice Cube! The key to victory was a new look on defense, the Browns' version of the Bears' 46. It controlled the game. The Steelers, held at just 29 yards in the second half, suffered four sacks and six interceptions, three coming on consecutive possessions. Hodge, Malone back under pressure, pops it out over the middle, intercepted by the Steelers. He may go for a touchdown. Clay Matthews. Matthews' touchdown was the topping to a great day. A successful debut for the Bear defense and the Steelers' sixth straight loss in Cleveland, 34 to 10. 80,000 fans screamed for more. What they got was one of the strangest chapters in the 38-year history of the franchise, replacement football. For three wild weeks, a mixed bag of strangers represented Cleveland surprisingly well. In New England, they ran over the Patriots for a win. Seven days later against Houston, the replacement Browns could manage only a single touchdown, losing to the division-leading Oilers by five points. The next week, Gary Danielson rode to the rescue with a near-perfect performance against the Bengals. Sparked by four Danielson touchdown tosses, the offense exploded for over 400 yards. The commanding 34 to nothing shutout of Cincinnati marked the end of the strike, but not the effect of the replacement players, who had earned respect in a difficult situation with their hard play. Though their dream had ended, the players exited the NFL with heads held high. On October 26th, the regulars returned for Monday night football against the Rams. Having already had one Monday night game canceled during the strike, the Browns weren't about to lose in front of a nationwide audience. Firing deep down the middle, Brennan wide open, at the 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, touchdown! The aerial fireworks lit up the sky and ignited the fans. But the Browns' diversified attack gets equal pleasure from detonating the running game. The Browns' top-ranked dog defense unleashed pyrotechnics of its own. Safety Felix Wright, number 22, showed the entire country what he could do with interceptions of 40 and 68 yards. 10, Everett to throw with time. Firing on the right side, intercepted by Felix Wright. He's going to go all the way for a touchdown. Felix Wright with his second interception of the game. Right in front of the dog pound behind the goal post of the bleachers. Have yourself a season and one night, Felix Wright. Felix has been everywhere tonight. The Browns celebrated a return to normalcy with a convincing defeat of the Rams and were tied for first place in the AFC Central Division. The Falcons were the next victim, cut down by number 34, Kevin Mack's lethal block. 
and Ernest Biner's three touchdowns. It was Cleveland's most lopsided margin of victory in a decade. Next up, the Bills. Gosar backpedaling, five-step drop, pops it over the middle to Slaughter, loses it to 40, he has gone for a touchdown! That play took about two seconds. To... With 346 yards and two touchdowns, Kosar had outdueled Kelly in a reunion of ex-college teammates. The win gave the Browns a 6-3 and three record and set up a showdown for first in Houston. Right from the very first series, the confident Browns burst the Oilers' balloon. All afternoon, Cleveland won the trench wars as Marty Schottenheimer's top-ranked defensive unit forced Warren Moon into his worst game of the year. In what was advertised as a showcase for the Central Division, the Oiler offense was dismantled to the tune of a half a dozen turnovers. It included a record-tying performance by cornerback Frank Minifield, number 31. With his mano-a-mano, chip-on-the-shoulder style, plus sheer flat-out speed, the all-pro cornerback stole three Houston passes. The ground game pounded up and down the Astrodome carpet with the subtlety of Kevin Mack taking a tackler head on. Offensive line is doing a super job. Kosar turns, fakes a handoff, gives it to the second man through. Biner with a big opening. 5 4 3 2 1 touchdown! The mismatch also featured the youngest starting quarterback in the NFL executing the Oilers with a season-high 457 yards and an overwhelming possession time of 43 minutes. The walloping of Houston gave Cleveland a 7-3 record and sole possession of first place. To grab the title, the Browns would now have to win their final three games. Led by their kid quarterback, they were right on target. Long count by Kosar, backpedaling, throwing on the left side for Slaughter, he's open, touchdown Browns! Kosar's four touchdown passes paced a convincing win over Cincinnati. Against the Raiders in the Coliseum, he was even better continuing his hot hand with 21 completions in 32 attempts for close to 300 yards. In one of his most impressive performances as a pro, the youngster riddled the Raiders secondary. Kosar back in the pocket, Bernie firing on the left side, Slaughter has a touchdown! That was threading the needle. There's no place you could have thrown that ball except where Kosar put it. Not to be outdone, the ground game rammed the ball on the Raiders' throat in a lengthy, clock-killing final drive. It iced the game. The first of two straight road trips the Browns had to win. The Steelers in Three Rivers Stadium was the second. For the second straight week, Cleveland's running attack controlled the tempo of the game. And an opportunistic defense snuffed out the Steelers' final hopes of attaining the playoffs. Cleveland outfought outthought and outplayed Pittsburgh for its third successive Central Division Championship. Ding dong, the jinx is definitely gone. The gun sounds and the Browns have done it again for the third consecutive year. They are the AFC Central Division Champions. No backing in for Cleveland in 1987. They have earned it. We knew we'd have to go and work for it. We knew that nothing would be given to us. And we expected to have a fight towards the end. And I think it helped prepare us for the playoffs by having to face the pressure, really, of a stretch drive. Their excitement is contagious and it rubs off on us. When you're in the middle of a game and you hear the crowd start to rev up and roar and start barking, it really gets your adrenaline flowing and it makes it that much easier to be successful on the next play. Oh, 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 oh. 
When Hanford Dixon coined the dog's nickname several seasons ago, he couldn't possibly have envisioned the colorful cast of canine characters that would come barking into the stadium. Nor could he have foreseen the effect it would have on his teammates. Whatever your opinion of these wacky dog lovers, the harmony that exists between the Browns and their fans of all pedigrees is real. It's why the stadium has become nationally known as Pandemonium Palace. This partnership had a genuinely positive impact on the team winning its division and gaining the NFL playoffs. It's playoff football once again here at Cleveland Stadium as the Browns revisit Pandemonium Palace for the third consecutive year in the AFC playoffs. Today, the Browns hope to take the first step toward that elusive Super Bowl championship for themselves when they take on the Indianapolis Colts. And we have a heat wave here at the stadium today. It is a robust 19 degrees at the kickoff with a wind chill factor of about five. The Browns must stop Eric Dickerson today. That is their big mission on defense. Offensively, can Bernie Kosar weave his magic once again? For Kosar, the Browns, the last couple of years have been a magic carpet ride. The mission to reach the Super Bowl, step one comes today. Right from the start, the Colts alerted the Browns they were in for a battle. In the first half, Indianapolis answered each Cleveland score with one of its own. Then the dogs dug in and stopped Eric Dickerson dead in his tracks. For the third time this season, the Browns held the superstar under 100 yards. Dickerson and his teammates had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The game turned on a defensive play in the third quarter when a blitzing Eddie Johnson forced a rainbow that was pulled in by Felix Wright. The crucial turnover unleashed the Browns' attack. Bernie Kosar, enjoying perfect protection, sprayed the ball to nine different receivers. For the rest of the game, it rained Cleveland points. Osar backpedaling, looking over the middle with time firing. It is caught at the two yard line. Lighters in front, touchdown! It comes to play every week. Osar with the ball right on the number. On this first plateau of the playoffs, Cleveland scored 38 points against a team that had previously allowed just 15 per game. Throwing deep down the middle, Lang Horn wide open, got the ball at the five, rolling at the two, gets back up and he scores! Reggie Langhorn scores on a miraculous catch and run! Nice to the gate. Appropriately, Cleveland's dog defense served up the final treat. The 1987 Browns were now only one win away from the Super Bowl. As I told you, men, when you work as one, nothing is beyond being accomplished. We did it our way. We did it. 45 guys as one, one play at a time. The last one counts as much as the first. We took the first step of our second season to winning the championship. Congratulations, right, right. Yeah, yeah.
We are four quarters away from the Super Bowl, and Denver stopped us last year. We'll be prepared to do whatever it takes to get to that final step. From Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, it's the rematch the Browns have long awaited. They've been waiting an entire year to get revenge against the Denver Broncos for losing the AFC Championship last season in Cleveland. John Elway for the Broncos. Bernie Kosar for the Browns. Now the time is here. The Browns against the Broncos for the right to go to the Super Bowl. One play at a time. At 60 minutes. Our football team. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Kosar backpedal. Firing. Caught by Slaughter over the middle. It's caught loose and intercepted by the Broncos. And Elway drills the pass. Fingertip pass. All week long, Schottenheimer stressed to his team they couldn't afford turnovers and still win. The Browns lost the ball on their first two possessions. After each era, the Broncos scored. This has really been Murphy's Law time for the Browns. Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong, and has gone wrong. And the Browns have greased the skids with lots of mistakes on their own behalf. Cleveland had dug a huge hole, but refused to be buried. Bernie Kosar audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. Kosar takes the snap and back pedals being blitzed. Firing over the middle. Langhorn has it for a touchdown. The Browns beat the blitz and they are still alive here in Denver. Yeah! We're on our way, man. We're on our way. Here's Elway retreating to the nine yard line. In trouble. Dancing around. Breaks free. Back at the five. Firing. It is caught by Jackson at the 25. Breaks a tackle. Gets a first down at the 35 40. 45 50. He's gone for a touchdown. to do in a large mountain to climb here right outside of the Rockies. It was time for the team to quit beating itself. Time to buckle up the chin strap and on the charmed arm of Bernie Kosar turn a route into one of the most memorable comebacks in playoff history. insurmountable will and Bernie's unstoppable touch the Browns were poised to tie the game Bernie's back to throw fires touchdown slaughter on a slant in the Browns are within a point of equalizing matters we got one going now in the mile high atmosphere we're a little bit short on breath the Browns have struggled back into an even Steven football game. They think we can't play? Hey, but this is our game, baby. We take it through right now. One more turn. One more turn. Right now. Right now. Don't wait. With 3.53 remaining, the Browns took the field for their final drive. One last try amidst the crescendo of drama of this amazing championship game. They must go 76 yards to equalize things, and they have three minutes and 53 seconds to do it. When you win a national championship at the age of 19, you don't fear anything.
the Brown stage a monumental march. Time for the comeback kid from the comeback town to put it all together again. From the eight yard lines, Kosar reaches under center Greg Ricosi. Hands up the Biner on the draw. Biner inside the five to the four to the three to the two. He almost a football and the Broncos have it, I believe. Oh my goodness. Doesn't seem fair. Let's wait and see when they unstack. There's a big pile up and Denver has it at the two yard line. Curtis Biner has played his heart out to have that happen. Unbelievable. No apologies or excuses have to be extended. He was so close to getting in for a touchdown. And there can be no consoling Ernest Biner right now. Perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. It was a game that left you breathless. A game that broke your heart. For the second straight season, Cleveland fell short in the championship game. This time, a scant three steps from their goal. I think that it's going to bring us back even stronger. I don't have any question in my mind that this is going to continue to galvanize our football team and put us in a position we're going to continue to improve and, and be a better football team in the coming seasons. If anything, it just created an appetite for what lies after that, which is a Super Bowl. And having made that, I know personally I won't be satisfied um, until we get to the Super Bowl and win it. Whatever it takes and whatever it Whatever we have to do in our mind, the ultimate goal is to win the Super Bowl. It's not to be in a championship game. It's not to be in the playoffs. It's not to play in the Super Bowl. It's not to be all pro. It's to win the championship. 